Good morning, Severn Run. Today we're continuing in week two on our series about the call of God. It's your call. And I want to really emphasize from the start a couple of things. The personal nature of the call, that it is from God to you, and also the dynamic reality of the call of God. You know, in this COVID season, many of the weaknesses of the Western church, the modern comfortable church in America, have been revealed. And in God allowing us not to, to gather as we have on Sunday mornings, um, it really has revealed some of the passive nature of our faith that many of us have identified ourselves as watchers only. But you are not. And even as you at home engage in worship today, you are not called to be passive. So I want to remind you again, engage online. Whatever platform you're on, take the time to let us know that you're here and take the time to respond to something that God says, uh, respond to something that el somebody else says. Take the time to interact and, and engage with your faith. You know, for far too long, um, the, the Western church has heard the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ and done almost nothing with it. And we have created a church culture that essentially says, come and sit, and that's the sum of your faith. When the reality is so much more real and so much more dynamic, you were called to more than this. You were called to change the world. You were called to be the light of the world. You were called to Christ. You were called to be Christ. And I am, am, am just struggling so much with this COVID season, everything from the masks to not being with you, uh, so much. And, and again, I want to remind you in the middle of that, we will be together again. But in the middle of all of this struggling, I am reminded that God allowed this. And he did it in part, I believe, to, to get us to listen, to call us to hear, to, to get us engaged with his word and what's real from the beginning. The call of God, it is, it is a reality, the defining reality of life. And it is dynamic. Like the rays of the sun, the heat of the summer sun shining down, it is relentless throughout the day. And as the moon is through the night, God's call is relentless on our life, always radiating towards us day and night to reveal his love and his will, his way and his heart for us. The call of God is from eternity past. It began in the darkness that was all of the formlessness and void of creation. And God called into the world, let there be light. And there was light. And God shaped nothingness into something. And it was the voice of God, the word of God that made that happen. And in the same way that there was nothingness before the voice of God, there is nothingness in our lives without the voice of God. In creation, there was never a thought, never, uh, you know, an inkling of any response to God, but to say yes, to respond without a will apart. But you and I, we have our own will. And you and I can say no to the call of God. It is as though matter being called into being, you know, was given a will to say, no, I will not be light. No, I will not be mountain. I will not be sky. How absurd would that be? And yet God created us with a free will to say yes or no to his will. To hear his call and respond to it dynamically with our life or to say no to it and to allow our own head, our own voice to be the center of our living. I want to say though, from my perspective, I have found no life outside of God's life. Over and over again throughout my journey, I have proved that I don't know how to live my life. Every time I'm in the driver's seat of the car, I wreck it. Uh, every time I listen to my best thoughts, my, my highest thinking, I, I end up in a ditch. That's just the way we broken people are. But from outside of our brokenness, and outside of our context and our circumstances, outside of our hardship, our birth, outside of everything, there exists a God who is above all, before all, over all, and who will be after all of the proud and the mighty and the arrogant have fallen in the dust. And this God, this creator God, is the speaking God who is calling you 
to himself. Speaking out of your chaos, your formlessness, the void in your life, God is speaking his created order, his beauty, his purpose, his passion into, into to your life and into my life. And if we will listen, we can hear it. So basically going to say the same thing at the beginning of all of these message series, and that is this, that the call of God is on your life. It's the dynamic centering reality of everything else. Outside of, of God's creation, there was nothingness. Outside of God's call, there is nothingness. Why are you here on earth? What's your purpose? Do you believe there's a God? And if there is, does he care enough about you to know your name and call you from your lightless places into his, his everlasting light? I believe there is, and he does. And I believe that you and I will always be off balance, off center, that you and I will never have life in abundance until we find it in a centering relationship, a dynamic obedience to Jesus Christ, where we are fiercely faithful, we are, we are fully passionate, and we live our faith in the world. In fact, we don't just live faith, a set of tenets. We live a person. We live Jesus. I, I, I you know, I, I understand the hardness of the season. It's different for everybody. There is so much rise in alcoholism. There's so much rise in drug abuse, in, in, in addictions of all kind, in depression. Uh, even a dentist, I, I, I was reading, uh, reopened his practice. And, and began to, to just see cracked teeth among uh, his patients like he'd never seen it before. And what's that from? Just stress. I know there is much going on and there is much to be concerned about. But the truth is that the centerpiece of your life will never be found in your feelings or circumstances, but in your centering response to the call of God. And God is speaking into your moment. God is speaking into your darkness. God is speaking into your brokenness, your sin. God is speaking into your feelings of lostness, hopelessness, worthlessness. God is speaking life. Can you hear him? You see, the destiny of your life is not in your circumstances or who's doing what to you now. The destiny of your life is all in response to your call. And because of that, we're without excuse. So here's a couple of things I just want to say to you, just kind of uh, in the beginning, in introducing, just say, listen for the call. Okay, listen for it. It's the voice of God, not all the voices in your head or in the crowd or in the culture or on Facebook. It is the one voice of a holy creator God. It's by faith. This call of God we're talking about, it is, it is fiercely faithful. You can't do this on your own. You can't do this by your own human logic. You and I are not the source of anything but sin in this world. It is outsourced eternally from God. It's by faith. And it requires courageous change. You can't hear the call of God and stay the same. You can't hear the call of God and do nothing with it. If you do nothing with the call of God, then really, you didn't hear the call of God at all. See, the truth is, the call of God is dynamic. It's a knowing that does. I'm praying for a revival during COVID, and I'm praying for a revival after COVID. And, and if this is a time where our weakness is revealed and, and our dependence is heightened, okay, uh, bring it on. It's all right. Whatever God wants to do during this season, it's good because he's good. But the simple reality is that for many of us, our whole faith relationship with Jesus has been essentially a do-nothing faith. We hear the words of Christ and we do nothing with them. We don't live them fiercely out in our, our family. We carry grudges. We, we continue in the same old sins. We, we are still as small as we used to be when, when, when the... the the enormity of the heart of Christ has been planted in us. It's not possible. And so I just want to say, and this isn't, this isn't about self-condemning. This is about self-satisfaction. This is about really arrogance. 
This is about a mistaken conception of what Christianity is, that, that you can know things and you're okay. You're not okay knowing things. You are not. You are in eternal peril. You are in danger of hell just knowing religious stuff. But knowing Jesus, on the other hand, it's not knowing things, that's knowing someone. And it's not knowing in some way that lets you stay where you are and do nothing with it. No, no, no. To know Jesus will make your life dynamic. You will live a life of actively following him for the rest of your life. In fact, probably for the rest of eternity. So to follow Jesus is to hear the call of God in a way that changes you, that, that causes faith to rise in your life, trust, that causes you to become less and Christ to become more, as John 3.30 says. It's a knowing that does. So just the first thing I want to just share with you just to kind of add on to that point is that the call of God is not a do-nothing call. It's just not. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 9, it, it's kind of the, the foundational call in Scripture, right? There's the call of creation. There's the call of, of Noah. In fact, just about on every page of Scripture, there is a call of some kind when you start reading it. It's pretty amazing. But the call of Abraham... It's sort of the foundational call of God because it's the beginning. So, so God began to form the heavens and the earth, right? And, and he formed um, uh, Eve and, and he, he for, actually, you know, literally Hebrew, it says God formed earth and then he formed living. Uh, Adama is, is earth and, and Eve means living. So God formed earth and living and, and, he, and he formed all this and he gave them a will and we chose to use that will against him. But with the call of Abraham, God begins reforming in a way that, that rests finally on the cross um, with three nails. In the call of Abraham, God began to bring all things together in Christ. And it was a long period, and, and, and God's doing uh, a thousand things, 10,000 things, in, in millions of lives that people did not know all that he was doing, but, but he's doing it all purposefully. And every call into every life is moving the ball down the field towards this eventual goal when, when God brings everything together in Jesus Christ and, and Christ is glorified and, and, and all of eternity begins um, in, in the praise of God singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. All of this kind of really begins in the call of Abraham. The scripture says in Genesis chapter 12, and the I am, the, the Lord, had said to Abram, God speaks. That's a call. And one of the, the profound theologies you need to understand uh, in your life on earth, in your struggles, is that God is a God who speaks. Uh, he doesn't speak according to, you, you know, my dictates or your whims. He doesn't speak according to my reason or, or even my will. But he is a God who always speaks to everyone who listens. And to every open heart he fills. So, right now you may be feeling abandoned and lost. You may be feeling alone and hopeless. And I might actually have to agree with you if there was no God. I might actually have to hear your situation and listen to it and say, you know what, you're, you're pretty much hosed. Um, but the truth is, there's a God. And the truth is, this is not a God who has his, his back turned towards you. This, this is a God who's, who's faced you. And not just faced you, but has spoken to you. This is a God who not only called, but even today, in this moment, last night, this morning, tonight, he is calling. And God said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. And I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And in this call, every word of it, there, there is so much that, that, that resonates and echoes through the life of every believer all the way through the, the birth of Christ and, and the call of Jesus to you and I. Follow me in Matthew 4.19. You know, I, I kind of sometimes have to really kind of begin with the simplest of beginnings, and I want to do that again. I, I just want to remind you in terms of human arrogance, in terms of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you know, that, that it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. I want to remind you that God's call is God's. 
and the ownership of the ideas and the the source of the the thinking and the creativity none of it's ours none of it comes from us none of it is is for us to check box approve it is from god almighty it is from the creator it originated in his mind his heart his will and his love it it doesn't fit into human logic it doesn't fit into even into human will at least the hard-hearted will god shows up to abram and and he simply says this abram i want you to leave everything that you know everyone you love all of the roots of your history i want you to to put an end to this story and i'm going to begin a new story in your life and you're going to have to trust me well god where are we going what's the road map i am the road map I am your very great reward. I am your shield, Abram. So you hear my call, learn to listen to my voice, and follow me. Hmm. Those very words are words that Jesus echoes in John. And he said, my sheep recognize my voice, and they come when I call. Ephesians 1.10 says this about the call of God. And this is the plan, that at the right time, God's time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. And so the testimony of the scripture is that God is the God of a plan. And that plan is, first of all, relationship, not roadmap. But it is a plan that has been infinitely successfully worked out from eternity past and has already succeeded in eternity future. And you and I are called and invited to be a part of this plan. We don't have to understand it. Uh, We don't have to to even like it. We just have to to hear it and, and go with it, to move, to do something with our faith. All of these pieces are coming together in the end. They they have been at work from the beginning. And No one who ever trusted God is ever put to shame. No one who's ever trusted God in all of Scripture has ever failed and said, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I wouldn't have trusted God. In the most unlikely of circumstances and in the most, um, you know, you know, weighted outcomes where things could never, you know, turn up right, everyone who ever trusted the call of God discovered that God knew what he was doing. That God was, in fact, working from eternity past in in a thousand million, a a trillion ways that no human mind could ever fathom, and and that that at the right time, he always brought things together. The timing varies at different times. In Jesus' case, it was three days. (laughs) But on the third, what a difference. And on that third morning when Jesus rose, where where were the fears and the doubts of the disciples? Where where was the victory of death over all of human history? Where was the pall of smoke as as Satan has succeeded in in burning down the house of man for for generations? It, It was all gone. Because God is a God who calls. He even called Jesus. Jesus said, you know, kneeling before the 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 arrest and the crucifixion, God, if there's any way, let this cup pass from me. And and yet not my will, but thy will be done. And so Jesus answered the call dynamically and picked up his cross and paid the ultimate price to prove God's a God who knows your name. God's a God who's called you into his heart. God's a God who knows what he's doing. I just want to say that, you know, in this story, the most remarkable part of the call of Abraham in Genesis 12 is Genesis chapter 12, verse (laughs) 4. And when we compare uh, human stories and human uh, history and and the human record, we we don't end up right here at Genesis chapter 12, verse 4 very often. Because here's what happened. God spoke. Abraham listened. And then he obeyed. He did something. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him. 
And Lot went with him and he took his wife and and the scripture says they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. And then the scripture goes on to say in verses six through nine that that repeatedly uh, Abraham stopped and just worshiped God. He didn't worry over the unknowns. Where am I? Where am I going? Is there going to be enough food, water? What's it going to be like when I get there? He just he just was consumed with the call of God and he and he worshiped over and over and he built an altar to God time and time again. And the simple truth is, you can't stay where you are and be where God is. It just doesn't work that way. And if you want to be a follower of Jesus, it's not enough for you to be a good church member. Uh, If you want to be a follower of Jesus, um, you have to answer your call in a way that is that is life dynamic in a way that, that, uh, that you put no price tags on. There are no limits to what you and I can say to God. We can't say, God, you can do this much and no more. The only way to answer your call is to answer your call to the same extent that, that God asked his only son to answer the call to. A cross, or not as a decoration, but as a place of dying. And we die twice every day. We die to our own will And then we die to our own sin and we allow the will and the way of God to be done in us. Your call is everything in your life. Your call is more than churchianity. Your call is more than than just a little bit of of spice added to your life. Your call is more than than you simply, you know, coming to church and and having a little bit of, 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 you know, light come on in your life. Your call is an explosion of creation. It is God saying, enjoy, let there be light. And then he calls your name and and he and he creates in you and he and he purposes you and, and then he he lives and walks with you. This is the call of God. I, I, what I want to say is that, is that in, in terms of our bonfires and our campfires, every one of you guys are called to be a part of those. And, and, and you're either called to jump into a campfire or to start one. You are called to, to be the difference. And I just want to share with you lastly, your call is the difference in this world. It's all the difference in your world. It is the difference between light and dark. It's the difference between life and death. It's the difference between happy and sad. It's the difference between sober and addicted. It's the difference between healthy and and unhealthy. It's the difference between unforgiving and forgiving. It's the difference between life and everything less. Your call is the difference. It's the breath of Christ from eternity. I, I, I really want to let that second I sink in. I am so sick and tired of, of honestly, of, I'm so sick and tired of seeing so little happen from God among us. I, I would rather die than spend my life just going through the motions. I would rather die than, than to see you just enduring life in, instead of enjoying Christ. I would... I would rather die than than see you sit on the sidelines, bored by by the game in front of you when you were called down from the stands onto the field to be a hero for God. And I would give my life for that. I will give my life for that if, if God asks. Because you are the difference in this dying, broken world. You're not here to whine about it. You're not here to complain about it. You're not here to to simply be another uh, part of of some sad story or to to be one more broken down human being or to to pass on the brokenness of your parents' generation to, to the kids and the grandkids. You're not here to be the chain. You're here to break the chain. You're here to be the difference. And your call and hearing your call and acting on your call is the difference between you living some sort of dumbed down cultural Christianity and you rising up and seeing a resurrected Jesus Christ saying, you come and follow me. And I want you to to be bold in your world. I want you to be bold at work. Well, I, I work for the government. I can't share Christ. That's garbage. It's crap. You can follow Christ anywhere. You can be the light anywhere it's dark. You can be a breath of fresh air anywhere people are suffocating. Don't give me dumb excuses about why you can't follow Jesus. The only reason any of us won't follow Jesus is because we're too stubborn and too blind and too arrogant and too lazy or fearful 
to do so. The call of God is an inspiring call. The call of God is a creative call. The call of God is an empowering call. The call of God is a building call. The call of God is a, is a, is a call that makes us sure. And it is the breath of Christ from eternity. And in this smoke-filled world that we're living, this, this, this smoke that is choking our lungs, Jesus Christ is the breath of fresh air that, that we each individually need and that the world around us needs. Acts 4.12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Saved, people. Not, not morally improved, saved. From lost to found, from dead to life, we have one name. It's the name of Jesus. Stop being embarrassed by the name. Stop being hesitant to speak it. Stop, stop waking up in the morning and ignoring it. The call of God is on your life every morning. God is calling you to follow his son, Jesus Christ, passionately and obediently to hear the call of God and to go throughout your day following his voice. This isn't some, something that's on the side of life. It's the center of life, Jesus. And if Jesus Christ is not the centerpiece of your life, if he is not Lord of all, then, then truly the old saying is found true. He cannot be Lord at all. Because although he takes the broken pieces, he requires them all. <laughs> and he receives them in love and makes beautiful things. But if you and I insist on holding back from him in fear or arrogance or anything else, we, we've made our call. John eleven twenty five 25 and 26 is, is the inspiring breath of Jesus saying, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives, listen to this, whoever lives by believing in me, not by knowing stuff about me and doing nothing with it, not by, by you know, making no difference in this world, not by, you know, just, just, you know, just floating like a dead fish down the stream. The one who lives by believing in me will live and never die. And then he asks Martha, do you believe this? And Matthew 4.19 is the centerpiece of it all. Follow me, Jesus said. Follow me. And I'll repurpose your life. I'm going to make you fishers of men. All the lesser purposes of life, all the, all the things that you thought you were about, you're not about those things now because, because now you're on the A-team and, and now um, the, the, the heart of, of, of my son Jesus Christ, it, it beats in you. The scripture tells us in John 14, 12, that Jesus Christ believes that we are the difference in the world. We, sh we should be. He said this, very, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me, Whoever hears my God's call to them in, in, in my name, whoever believes in me, will do the works that I have been doing, will do the works, will, will, will live in a way that they will become the difference of God in a dying planet. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Guys, it's your call. It's all your call. It's your call whether you live sad or broken down or you live joyful and victorious. It's your call whether you live uh, in the sins of your past or the forgiveness of, of, of the offer of the future. It's your call whether you live believing you are nothing or, or, or discovering who you are in Jesus Christ. It's your call and how you answer it is, is everything. So here's how I want, what I want you to do today. Here's how I want you to answer your call. Commit your life fiercely to Christ. Commit your life to Christ. Call on the name of Jesus. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Commit your life to him and answer the call of God to salvation. Follow him up in baptism. Right now in, in the, the, the comments section, just write, I, I want to commit my life to Christ or I want to follow him in baptism. We'll make it happen. Secondly, be the Christ difference in the world. Do what God's calling you to do. Because I promise you that God is, is working all things together in Christ and in your call. And in your call is every way forward that you and I could ever hope to find. Answer your call.